Assalamualaikum, uh, everybody. Um, so my speech, as you can see, is on um, animals of Quran. Here, I'm gonna put this right there. And uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be a cool topic to think about and talk about. And there's a good amount of animals mentioned in the Quran, and it's good that we reflect upon them, God willing. So, uh, secret vision, God is saying it. Um, so, animals and birds, submitting creatures. All the creatures on earth and all the birds that fly with the wings are communities like you. We did not leave anything out of this book. To their Lord, all these creatures will be summoned. Uh, the footnote says, animals were among the creatures who took advantage of God's offer to repent after committing the original sin. See the introduction. And the second footnote says, all information relevant to our eternal life of the hereafter is contained in the Quran. The true believers accept without hesitation God's assertion. We did not leave anything out of this book. Out of, out of this book. The importance of this statement and similar statements is reflected in the fact that each of them consists of 19 Arabic letters, Appendix 19. And Surah 45, verse 4, also in your creation and the, in the creation of the animals, of all the animals, there are proofs, there, yeah, there are proofs for the people who are certain. We have the, uh, the appendix, or no, in the introduction, sorry. Um, so it says, although the angels suggested that the rebels and their leader should be exiled from God's kingdom, sir, 2, verse 30, the most merciful will to give the rebels a chance to denounce their crime, repent, and submit to his absolute authority, 3372. As represented in the diagram above, the vast majority of the rebels took advantage of God's gracious offer to re-enter his kingdom. They agreed to kill their egos, come to this world to perform a submissive role as an expiation for their blasphemy. In return for their submissive role in this world, these creatures are redeemed back to God's eternal kingdom, Surah 6, verse 38. The horse, the dog, the tree, the sun, the moon, the stars, as well as the deformed and retarded children are among the intelligent creatures who denounced their crime and repented. And then Surah 22, verse 18. Do you not realize that to God prostrates everyone in the heavens and the earth, and the sun and the moon and the stars and the mountains and the trees and the animals and many people? Many others among, uh, yeah, many others among the people are committed to doom. Whomever God shames, none will honor him. Everything is in accordance with God's will. So now we have some preface. We can get in to, oh, bees. So, Surah 16, verse 60 and 69, and the footnote, um, the bee. And your Lord inspired the bee, build homes in the mountains and the trees, and in the hives they build for you. And then Surah, or verse 69, then eat from all the fruits, following the design of your Lord precisely. From their bellies comes a drink of, of different colors, wherein there, there is healing for the people, for the people. This should be sufficient proof for those who reflect, for people who reflect. Beside, besides its recognized nutritive value, honey has been scientifically proven as a healing medicine for certain allergies and other ailments. So there's some uh, cool bee facts. So um, as we know, bees are some of the most important insects um, in the animal kingdom. So bees are the only insects that produce food eaten by men or honey. Honey is the only food that includes all the substances necessary to sustain life, including enzymes, vitamins, hunt, uh, minerals, and water. And it's the only food that contains pinocembrin, an antioxidant associated with improved brain functioning. The honeybee's wings stroke incredibly fast, about 200 beats per second, thus making their famous distinctive buzz. A honeybee can fly up to six miles and as fast as 15 miles per hour. The average worker bee produces only about one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in their lifetime. Doesn't this fact make you love every drop of honey? <laughs> Read and you will understand why it makes so much sense to say, as busy as a bee. And each honey bee colony has a unique odor for members' identification. So each bee has a certain um, colony that it's, it's assigned to, right? It doesn't go through random colonies. so. They use odor to uh, find the one they belong to. And uh, this is a quote I found from an author about bees. He's only written one book, and it's about bees. 
So he said, unique among all God's creatures, only the honeybee improves the environment and preys not on any other species. So bees only prey on flowers, which aren't really, I mean, they're species, but they're not animals. So I'm sure a lot of us have seen the bee movie, and this famous quote is from it. It says, according to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyways, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. <laughs> so now that we've talked about bees, let's talk about spiders. Sorry, arachnophobes. Um, so. The spider, chapter 29, verse 41. The allegory of those who accept other masters besides God is that of the spider in her home. The flimsiest of all homes is the home of the spider, if only they knew. God knows full well that whatever they worship besides him are really nothing. He is the Almighty, the most wise. We cite these examples for the people, and none appreciate them except the knowledgeable. It takes a knowledgeable person to know that the black widow spider kills her mate. The use of the feminine reference to the spider in Surah 29 verse 41 is thus significant. This is in addition to the fact that the spider web is physically very flimsy. So I'm sure we've all walked through a spider web and it's gotten in our face and like, get it out of here. Well, we just ruined a spider's work of like probably a few weeks, so sorry. So now to go into some cool facts about spiders. Um, an estimated one million spiders live in one acre of land. The number might be closer to three million in the tropics. It is estimated that a human is never more than 10 feet away from a spider, ever. So look around you guys. Hey, that, that can mean under the ground too, so don't be scared. It'll be under the ground. So um, spiders are vital to a healthy ecosystem. They eat harmful insects, pollinate plants, and recycle dead animal and... Uh, yeah, dead animal and plants back into the earth. They are also a valuable food source for many small mammals, like birds, oh, many small mammals, birds, and fish. And um, in the tropical regions, there are net-throwing spiders that make a small silken web that they throw over their prey. So they literally make a web and they launch it and catch their prey. Pretty crazy. So. Um, some male spiders also give dead flies to females as present or presents, so chivalry really isn't dead. And hundreds of years ago, people put spider webs on their wounds because they believed it would help stop the bleeding. Scientists now know that the silk contains vitamin K, which helps reduce bleeding. So vitamin K will coagulate the blood, making it thicker, which would reduce the bleeding when someone is uh, uh, hurt. So. Um, the Darwin bark spider creates the strongest material made by a living organism. Their giant webs can span rivers, streams, and even lakes, and is 10 times stronger than Kevlar. So um, even though the spiders have very, I mean, we could still take this spider's house out like it's nothing, right? But um, the, the example that it gives to Kevlar is we use Kevlar in bulletproof vests, right? So if we were to weave a spider, the spider webs like that as densely as Kevlar is, uh, it would be 10 times stronger than a Kevlar bulletproof vest. So it, um, in essence, it could stop a bullet. And also, uh, about the how, remember the footnote said about the black uh, widow females? Um, so only, black wid only female black widows can build webs and catch prey. Males do not feed as adults. Instead, they concentrate all their effort on mating. A female black widow kills her mate and, say sometime, and may sometimes eat him after mating. A red widow female <laughs> spider will begin feeding on the male while they are still mating sometimes. However, the male practically force feeds himself to the female by placing himself into her mandibles. If she spits him out, he will repeatedly place himself there until she eats him. So someone's eager to get back to heaven. <laughs> so now to go into ants. Oh, whoa. not there yet. There we go. Ants, so, so 27 verse 18. When they approached the valley of the ants, one ant said, O oh, you ants, go into your homes, lest you get crushed by Solomon and his soldiers without perceiving. He smiled and laughed at her statement and said, My Lord, direct me to be appreciative of the blessings you have bestowed upon me and my parents, and to do the righteous works that please you. Admit me by your mercy into the company of your righteous servants. The footnote says, The more unusual the event is in a given surah, 
or the events in a given surah, the stronger the mathematical evidence supporting them. Uh, supporting them. This helps assure us that such strange phenomena are indicative of God's power. The sur this surah's initials, TS, co constitute a complex part of, a of the mathematical miracles related to the Quranic initials. The unusual birth and miracles of Jesus are in Surah 19, which is prefixed with five Quranic initials. See Appendix 1 for the details. So um, here is proof of why the um, ant that was mentioned in the verse had to be a female. So girl ants, um, for them in the average colony, there's two kinds of female ants that exist. There's those who mate and those who don't. The non-mating females are all the daughters of the queen. The non, or, or so, sorry, wait, wait, oh yeah. The non-mating females raise the babies, gather the food, maintain and expand the nest, and look after the queen, who does nothing but lays eggs continuously. Queen ants are born to be queens because of a special genetic combination between their parents. So now boy ants, um, males are smaller than females with smaller heads and longer antenna. They also have wings. So unless you dig into an ant colony, it's unlikely you'll ever see a male ant except on one special hot, humid day in the early summer after the spring rains have passed. That's when all the, fem er, when all the male ants come out and use their wings to mate. So if you ever see a, uh, a female ant, or if you ever see an ant, it, it's going to be female most likely, and that's why Solomon uh, talked to the, was talking to the female ant. So I'm going to, I have a few more slides, and I have two minutes, so I'm just going to kind of maybe go only say a few of these facts. Um, ants are ridiculously strong. They have the ability to carry between 10 and 50 times their own body weight. The amount an ant can carry depends on the species. The Asian weaver ant, for example, can lift 100 times its own mass. Because of their small size, ant muscles um, have a greater cross-sectional area relative to their body size compared to larger animals. This means they can produce uh, more force. This would be like me being able to carry an elephant. Um, let's see. Uh, ants have two stomachs. One of their stomachs is for holding food for their own consumption, while the other one is to hold food to be shared with many other ants. This process is known as trophallaxis and allows a colony to work extremely efficiently. It allows for the ants who forage for food to feed those which stay behind and tend to the duties of the queen and the nest. So now, camels. Only, it doesn't talk a lot about camels, but um, the verse is very powerful. It says, uh, why do they not reflect on the camels and how they are created? So camels are insane creatures. Um, if you guys didn't know, they're, very, they're a lot cooler than you think they are. There's me and Shane on a camel. Shane and I, grammar. Um, this is in Iran, long time, like 2014? I don't know, something like that. So that was pretty cool, rode a camel. So um, this is why God tells us to reflect on the camel and its creation. They are especially adapted to life in the desert. They have three eyelids and two rows of eyelashes that prevent the sand to enter their, their eyes. Um, and then camels, oh, camels can survive without food and water for a long period of time. And um, most mammals would die if they have fi lose 15% of their water, which is a critical loss of water, which is dehydration. But a camel can lose 20 to 25% of water without becoming dehydrated. And I'm just gonna read one more. Um, the temperature of their body ranges from 93.2 during the night to 105.8 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. They will start sweating when the temperature is over 105.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So our cells start to die at 106 degrees, so we'll, we would die by the time they start breaking a sweat. It's pretty crazy. Um, and last one, flies. Sorry, Pam. Um, flies. Can they create a fly? 2273. Oh, people, here is a parable for you that you must ponder carefully. The idols you set up besides God can never create a fly, even if they banded together to do so. Furthermore, if the fly steals anything from them, they cannot recover it. Weak is the pursuer and the pursued. So the reason it says they cannot recover is because when flies take something, what? Oh, thank you, Zach. Good call. So, oh, um, yeah, the reason you can't recover is because um, flies have this like acid in their mouth that melts down the food so they can like drink it like a drink instead of eating it as a solid food. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So the, a fly um, is a small, simple creature. And God is saying that they can't even create a fly to emphasize the fact that any idol that is set up besides God is utterly powerless. And I'm just not going to read the flies. I'll say one. Over 100,000 species of flies live on the earth. Pretty crazy, right? Cool. So 
Um, in conclusion, God has created every single one of his creatures perfectly. He is he has made um, he has made their bodies accustomed to whatever environment or terrain they may live in. He has given them certain traits and abilities that are extraordinary and that not even the smartest person you could think of uh, could oh sorry, that's a typo, my bad. Uh, <laughs> I was I meant to say not the smartest person you could think of could even make. So not to mention his beautiful and intricate design that goes into the creation of every creature. God be glorified, he is truly the best designer and best creator. So I, I'm gonna go through these real quick. That's a mandarin fish, pretty cool. That's an oriental dwarf king fisher. That's a peacock, and those are some tigers. <laughs> so why do you think God inspired you to make this? Uh, in, uh, speech. Was it that you don't like reflect on animals or? Well, what are you trying to call me out for, dude? <laughs> nah, <laughs> just answer the question. I don't know. Uh, I was like watching some YouTube videos on some animals one day, and I was it was like a month ago, and I was thinking about a, like topics for the I could write about, and I just figured like why not write about animals because those are pretty cool, pretty entertaining topic, and well, like you know there I mean there's a lot of like, animals are very complex. There's lots of species we don't even know about on the ocean floor, and I'm sure they do things that we've never even heard of. So there's just really intricate creatures by God's leave. So, Marshall, let's give it. Yeah. Noah Hamm.